What up, what up? Welcome to our new podcast show. Two people Zero got guy in their mic. mic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Welcome to your boy Jeffrey right now. And the reason for our show is to hopefully bring a lot of resources, information. Awareness. Awareness to the stories, disabled community. Real life stories. Yes, yes. It's got to be raw. Raw. Raw uh, life stories. Like, like, uh, caregivers. Everything. Even professionals. Cops. Everything. We're going to talk about parents. We're going to talk about... Wives, we're gonna talk about how they abuse us. They, we're gonna, <laughs> nah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna get, we're gonna come to you guys with like Alex Aww. said. We're gonna come to you guys with a lot of resources and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it fun. We're gonna make it fun, right? For sure. All For right. Sure. So, uh, who wants to? Int- you wanna start with your story first, yeah, or you want me to go? Twenty years ago, July 9th, two thousand four. Decided to get rid of my motorcycle. I get on it. I was on the turnpike. Get hit by a car. Land on the other side. Life support. Ended up in uh, the nearest trauma center to where my accident happened on the turnpike. And from there on, you know, spinal cord injury, new life. Figure it out. You know, I was one of the lucky ones that went through a smooth process through the hospital experience. Uh... Taken to a rehab center where you basically live how, you know, learn how to live your new life. And from there on, I was able to get with the right people to create a nice support group, learned a lot, you know, did a lot of things while on the wheelchair. And hopefully I'm able to bring my personal experience to those out there who might need it at this time. Or maybe just, you know, you could be an old school on a wheelchair and you just want to learn new things. Or maybe I learn from you. You yeah, shoot us an nice. email. You send us a video, that kind of thing. And, Shoot you know, us an email there. to two disabled guys in the mic at gmail.com. We will reply as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, and that's two disabled guys with the number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we are two. So now let me jump into me. Uh, so like I said, my name is Jeffrey. My accident was July 2nd, 05. It was on Pan Island on my way to... Uh, I was on my way to be like going towards 595. I was in my motorcycle and it just and an elderly person kind of cut me off and I just went from there. Um, I ended up uh, in the hospital. I was in a coma. I've died 12 times. So let's look at that as a plus. I guess. Yeah, man. Big bless. Um, I was in a coma for 23 days. Funny thing, I woke up on the day of my sister's 15th birthday. So she dropped out of high school to take care of take me. Take care of you, I remember you. On uh, my, so my amputation, no, and the funny thing, like, I didn't know, when I woke up, I didn't know anything about my amputation, because right. no, nobody told me. Right, right. So everybody was like waiting to see when I found out, my G, oh how, my God, I remember calling my father at five o'clock in the morning, so he could explain. He hit you hard. Me. Hell yeah. yeah, hell yeah, he hit I you like I remember the way I found out, I think it was some doctor that walked in, asked me how I was feeling, how I was doing, what I was in the mood for, and I said, you know what? I feel like I want to be home. How about walking? Yeah, and he goes, <laughs> uh, how about that's not going to happen anytime soon because you'll never walk again, and I'm just kind of confused. Like, It's kind of like I knew, but him saying it was kind of like, the, <clears throat> obviously the first time you hear it, and you're like, oh, man, like for real? Like, you kind of want to wake up from that. And I remember, so when my nurse came, right, I said to her, like, I remember Teresita, that was her name. I'm like, Teresita, my, I feel like my leg is out of my, out of the bed. And she said, you know, she looked in the bed and said, your leg is fine. I'm like, no, I feel like it's out of the bed. Right, right, right. She said, no, 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 your leg is fine. So I kept going and going. And she said, Jeffrey, you were in a motorcycle accident and you had to amputate your leg. So she like, broke oh, it down. Shit. So then that's when my father came in and he told me, bro, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Every day was something bad. Because I was, uh, uh, my, my, I had my abdomen open for seven I years. I remember you telling me. I had a colostomy bag, a super pubic catheter. Every day yeah, they tough. used to tell me something new. You know what I mean? And then my support was crappy. I only had my grandmother that was six or something years old and my right. sister who had to drop out of school to take care of me. Be able to take care of you, yeah, no, that's so, tough. And, so it's, it took me seven years to get back on to my get feet. Back to seven normal. years and I want to say over 40 surgeries in total by now. So I'm full of metal everywhere. Tough. I just had another surgery in September. Like the disabled life ain't no joke. 
yeah. So people now can understand somewhat of what you've been through because they'll never understand what you've been through. But at least Only you be able to experience that. But it's going to be others that are going to be part of our show watching us who will take a lot from that, you know, where, who, you know, their injuries might be less severe than that and they're going through something, but then they see you doing good and you're able For to uplift them. Funny thing that you mentioned that, so uh, the, my, the doctor that saved my life, Carrillo, he actually said to me once, because I was, I think I was complaining. So he took me to see this kid who was 20 years old, man, he was Cuban. And uh, the kid had like one of those short memory type of things. Like he could, like every 30 seconds, yeah. he forgot who the hell he was. Yo, that opened my eyes so much, man. Like, Cause I'm like, shit, okay, I'm all my stuff, but this kid is fine, 20 years old. And he has no clue what who the hell his parents are or yeah, any mental disability. Yeah, there's, and no there's so many disabilities that are out there. Probably some that you and me have no clue about. 100%. And that we're looking to learn. By the way, we are not professionals. No, for sure. You we're know, we are just guys two disabled guys. And personal experiences. Talking about our personal experiences and things like that. So... So you mentioned that after the hospital, you went, how, how long were you in the hospital? Oh man, for close to, I want to say 10 months in a few weeks. Damn. Rehab, the whole night before I saw my house, you know, like so much time had gone by, but just that smell of coming home to me, you know, because that was my experience. Just being home, I think that's exactly what I needed when my accident happened. Not for me. I, I miss my home like that. I just wanted to be there. Not for I me. I think that's exactly what I needed when my accident happened. Not for me. I, I miss my home like that. I just wanted to be there. Not for me. And, and it was crazy because I was not living with my parents, but that smell of my parents' home, it kind of brought me back to like comfort. a comfort zone. So I was like, I think I healed well. When mine, when mine happened, it was, I think it was a hurricane, Irma was passing by, I remember, power went out and everything, and, um, yo, in September 4th, 05, that's when I went home, I did not want to go home, dude, I didn't want to face reality, I, I wasn't going back to my house, I was going back to my dad's house, yeah, and, you know, I mean, and, and you, think it, you think it's going to be better, because you have your family, but, then you really have no 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 backup for real. So right, everything right. that I've learned, I've learned. And on they're my learning own. from you. Exactly. Like whatever you're going through, they don't know exactly. how to deal with. It's by not like way, you took a lesson to deal with someone with an injury. Yes, by the way, shout out to my grandma, my little sister. Yeah, Love all the you guys. caregivers, family, all those. My friends. wife. You know what? All those friends will stick around. <laughs> uh, how many because for you? How many for you? I think I hung out with two or three of the guys that I rode motorcycle with, but mm -hmm. the rest. And I understand because they don't know how to react to hearing, oh, this guy's not walking again. I think I would have freaked out if one of my friends ended 100%. up. 100%. And I don't know if I would have been there or not. So you really can't blame people. You don't know how they're going to react. You know, uh, I know when we mentor, we mentioned to a lot of the guys or the girls who we're talking to, not to mix their partner with their medical situations that they're going to go through. Because you, you can't be a lover and a caregiver. No, and you usually lash out at the person that you love the most. And so if your caregiver is the person who's going to be with you most of the time. So if you're in a bad mood... But however, gonna, you know, a lot of those people are forced to be both. 100%. So, you know, it's not like we're telling you you're the, a horrible person. We just, you know, try to... You know, let people know that that affects like one thing with another. You know, when I have my surgeries, when I have big surgeries, I usually, you know, you know, I stay home for a couple of months and things like that. So my wife is my caregiver, right? Right. So she's the one that gives me breakfast. Shout lunch. out to the wifeies. Yes, yes, definitely yeah. wifey Jill. Love you very much, Baby. honey. Um, so we're getting brownie points, guys. So you see, you can actually see on. The By the way, they're the bosses in the back. Oh, definitely, definitely. Running the show. We're not running anything. We're just standing here, we're sitting. Just working. Here. Right now, we're working. Yeah, we're working. They're on running that the laughing. whole show. They get the paychecks. So. By the way, we need sponsors for this show. Yes, yes, yes. It's a lie. It took us hit us up. Right of thinking about it, talking about it. Now we Planning. finally made it happen. Yeah. So. Hopefully we get good sponsors, guys. This platform, I hope it grows to something super 
informational, resourceful, not for just for you and I, but for everyone watching the show. No, definitely. No, they, like, like so you So we're said, like the Tesla stock. You better get yes, it now. First yes, two yes, late. yes. Or oh, like Apple. We're like that. that. Anyway, so like you were mentioning, yes, it's going to be a very informative show. It's going to hit you with information. It's going to hit you with resources. You're going to hit us with information and you're going to hit learn. us with resources. It's going to be like a boomerang effect. <clears throat> and we we all feed each other. Yes, and it's going to be raw. We want reality here. We we don't want anything fake. We'll be having guests. Yes, definitely. Guest speakers of all injuries that are doing well. They're going to show you guys how they're living their life. The ones that are doing not as well also. And the, the ones that not are not everybody's doing, doing well. 100%, yeah. Let's, let's We're keep We're going to bring real. those raw, brand new injuries to the show so that you guys could hear where they're at. Their you know? And hopefully we all help that person out. Yeah, because the whole idea, once you start with inclusion, it becomes a norm. You know, like in your house, when you have your triplets, for them, a person in a wheelchair is a norm. I got thing. triplets, by the way. You know? Yeah! Are you trying to like, like, anyways, you know, for them, it's a normal thing. I remember after my accident, a couple of years after, my little sister said to me, now nah, would they somebody in a wheelchair? Because now she knows that the wheelchair doesn't really matter. That's why I always tell my wife, you guys are special. I Your think the eyes wheelchair are doesn't matter depending on the person. Because there's a lot of people out there that are on that negative vibe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like you even in a wheelchair, you go by them, you're like, oh, I don't want to look at this person. Cause they yeah. Just, you just get that vibe. You got to give yourself your five minutes of pity. I always do. Like, I go through that. I go through my ups and downs. And yeah, I don't want to talk to people. Days. And I don't want to do this. And I don't want to do that. Then Spasm get, days. Yeah, I get into a five days. wifey, kidney stones. All, all that all type of, that. of stuff. Yeah, so, but shout out to my doctor. To one of the points that you were mentioning before, shout out to my doctor, Carrillo. Dr. Carrillo sponsors us. Dr. He Carrillo, said to me, send us that check. Yes, yes. He said to me, your, and I'm going to ask, curse here for the small he said you're you fucked up bleep. he said your <laughs> fucked upness is gonna help people feel better yeah. about themselves yeah because once they see you and you go through your situation you explain your situation and they not see only you go through well, what you went through but working dude have a family you have a house you drive you're healthy independent. You drive. I like, I like you got the baddest say. podcast show on the internet come on now yes yes to disabled guys see. in the mic you know it Hit me up with the claps in there. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> so yeah, man. I, I, I think I think we're gonna I think we're gonna bring some awareness and I think we're gonna change some minds and I think we're gonna this is gonna be great, man. This is gonna be sure. great. Yeah, so sure. everybody stay tuned, sign up, peace and love. Yes, we yes, out. peace, love. The record button.